Hi, I'm Dr. Jim Lynch from the Stellate Institute in Annapolis, Maryland. I just wanted to share some exciting news we had about a study that we published recently in the peer-reviewed literature showing that Stellate Ganglion Block can reduce anxiety symptoms in half. This is exciting because we've been studying the use of Stellate Ganglion Block in post-traumatic stress for over 12 years and have published much of our evidence uh, in the literature on that. But this is the first study that shows that it's been very helpful to treat anxiety symptoms. And if you are an anxiety sufferer or you treat those with anxiety, you're probably aware that the numbers are growing, that this is a, a issue that faces our country, um, particularly the younger generations and is uh, something that we really need to get creative about and start thinking about other things we can do to help treat anxiety. In this case, we're using a procedure that's been around for 100 years. It's been something that's been uh, tried and true and, and well used in the PTSD uh, treatment realm. And what we found is that a lot of the symptoms overlap. So many people with anxiety symptoms feel the same physiologic sensations in their body as people that have PTSD. Um, many of you who have anxiety or who treat anxiety know this and understand this, that there is an uncomfortable sensation that happens in the body of feeling on edge um, more often than you'd like to. And there's something that we can do about it by specifically targeting the body's sympathetic nervous system. And like I said, we'll do this with a procedure that's been extremely uh, safe. It's been performed over 100 years. It's not using any new technique or any new medication or anything like that. This has just been something that we discovered um, has a very useful indication in treating uh, anxiety symptoms. So what we found in our study is if we score anxiety symptoms on a 20 point scale, 21 point scale called the GAD7, uh, we can drop anxiety symptoms by about uh, nine to 10 points. Um, that's a significant finding in that typically we consider about a four point drop on that scale to be clinically significant. So this is over twice that. And what we found is that by performing the procedure um, on one side is very effective, but if we add a second side, meaning we treat the stellate ganglion on one side, followed by the, the other side the next day, we find that that is even more effective. And that's the first study that has shown that a bilateral block or bilateral SGB, stellate ganglion block, is more effective than a single side. So these are a, a couple of very exciting findings that we wanted to share with you. But what I really want to do is just take a minute to explain why, because uh, too often people will hear about something like the stellate ganglion block, and it just sounds weird. It sounded weird to me when I first heard about it. It's a little unusual. How would you possibly treat anxiety by an injection in the neck? It sounds odd. Um, and it's not a pill, it's not a therapy, so how could this possibly work? Uh, when I tell you, you'll be a little bit surprised and, and frankly, maybe disappointed that nobody has figured this out before has introduced this to you because it's really sh quite straightforward and anatomically it makes a lot of sense. The reason why is there's a nerve in the neck called the cervical sympathetic trunk. This is uh, the nerve that carries all the body's fight or flight signals between the brain and the body. The cervical sympathetic trunk doesn't have a fancy name like the vagus nerve, which carries all the parasympathetic fibers between the brain and the body. And many people are familiar with the vagus nerve, but the cervical sympathetic trunk is kind of the lesser known cousin of the vagus nerve, but extremely important. And if you have anxiety or PTSD, it's extremely important because it's probably a major contributor to your symptoms. And it's actually something we can do something about. So the, the key thing is what happens is the brain has a central autonomic network that is responsible for storing memories, learning what's threatening, sensing what's threatening, and then telling the body what to do with that. And it's governed by a, an area in the brain called the amygdala. The amygdala is essentially the fire alarm of the brain. And the fire alarm of the brain will tell the body it's time to fight or flight. These are things that um, are natural responses. They're built into our survival mechanism. The way the brain tells the body that is not through a Bluetooth connection, it's hardwired. It's through a signal that travels on a nerve. The nerve runs in the side of the neck and it's called the cervical sympathetic trunk. It travels from the brain and it hits the, it travels through the neck in what we call an anatomic funnel here. And then it spreads out to the entire body and it spreads out in a giant network instantaneously when the signals travel there. So if the guy in front of you slams on his brakes on the car, and you sense it, you immediately go into fight or flight mode and your whole body goes into anxiety mode because the signal travels down and it branches out in all these different directions. It goes to your heart and it makes your heart race. It fills your lungs with air. Your muscles clench and fire. Your sweat glands fire. 
all of these things happen instantaneously. The hairs on your on your arms stand up. These things happen through a, through a signal that travels right down the neck, hits the body until the threat is gone, and then the body can relax. It also carries the signals from the body back up to the brain. And this is an important feature because this is what can cause some dysfunction. If a threat is persistent like that, and someone senses that a threat is there, what can happen is you can essentially establish a dysfunctional circuit or a loop that has become in a hyper aroused state inappropriately. What happens is it can just stay like that for a while. And for some people it does, for other people it does not. And we can't explain why this happens to some and not others um, very specifically, but it, it simply does. And the sympathetic nervous system does not discriminate doesn't care whether that threat is from a bear coming out of the woods or the guy slamming on his brakes or whether it's from a traumatic or a stressful episode. It just knows there's a threat and it's time to get the body and the brain ready. So by numbing this nerve using a medicine called ropivacaine, we put it to sleep. That's all. When the nerve goes to sleep, it just goes to sleep, just like the dentist does when they numb your nerve before they do dental work. It goes to sleep, it wakes up eight hours later after the ropivacaine wears off and it leaves your body. When that happens though, it's just enough to disconnect the signal that's traveling between the brain and the body and break the loop. When the loop is broken, that's enough to restore a normal state here and essentially break that feedback loop that has perpetuated the signal for some people for many, many years, for some people their entire lives. Calm the body, calm the mind.